like this world, really, because it's just so chill. I joined this world and my friends were like talking about how they know this person up here and I was like, okay, let's go say hi to him and he was AFK and then my other friend joined and he told me he was friend with this person up here too and so we went up here again and talked to him and he was really nice and now we're friends. Uh, PC only there on top of the tower. It's like yeah, unfortunately I don't know a super whole lot about this stuff But I've only been here because like the friend the person that just appeared there and just ran that way That's the one we came to say hi to mm -hmm. But I don't only know very little uh, and she's friends with uh, the person on top of the tower But um, there's always people coming in and out here and there some some regulars too He was born in the lighthouse, so he's staying there for his whole life He's Rapunzel, there you go. No, like for real, I've seen him for like months in there, like... No joke. He's literally stuck. Is that your real height? He says he plays other games and whatnot, but... How? How does he do that? He's always here! He's just, I don't understand! <laughs> Bro, that's just that's like wasting dying resources. In the background. Bro. I thought they could just go AFK. I heard he, um, he, he lent my friend a million dollars, you know. <laughs> exactly. He did, he, he's a good, <laughs> Very generous. Good, awesome dude. Yeah. yeah. Pretty generous. Yeah. Great guy. That's pretty good. Yeah. That's pretty good. People started calling me. I don't know why. They started calling me like the guardian, the guardian of the lighthouse or something. Um, uh, I guess that's because I was just always around and I was always looking at the moon and so for them it felt like I was like guarding this place or something. I, I don't know. It's not really one story because it's, it's already happened like three times by now. Um, I'm excited. Because basically what has happened is that like, like, you know, I'm sort of sitting in one location all the time, sort of on this side looking towards the moon at the at the lighthouse, right? And so basically what happened is that because I'm sleeping at certain times and Americans are awake at certain times, um, a, a rumor started where people actually thought that um, I had either killed myself or at least that I had died and that I was just idle there for days and days and weeks because my computer was still I knew I was dead. And so that was kind of an urban legend that started spreading. And so like uh, three times now when I've come back and some people have been surrounding me or, or if they've come up here and I'm active they'll be like oh my god you're alive people told me that you were dead that you had died or something I was like yeah no that's that's not the case I'm sorry so yeah uh, well uh, since I think it was like late August or early September uh, somewhere or that uh, I just I decided that I don't know I really like this world, and I got to know a lot of the people in it already. And then I just sort of decided, all right, I guess I'll I'll stay here. And then after that, I just sort of didn't leave. So yeah, it's been a good. How many months is that? If it's August, God, it's embarrassing that I don't know that. I think five to six yeah. months, something like that. What motivates me mainly is just that. Um. I feel like sort of like being here has helped me uh, network with people, sort of, where, like, people sort of come here to talk with me, and personally, at the time when I sort of chose to get up there, I was, I was definitely in a lonely mood, right? I think a lot of people in VR chat can relate to that. And I felt like I hadn't really been able to connect with a single person on here at the time, or, like, very, very few. And that I kept like trying to follow people around and that nobody ever followed me. And so a part of like the idea was sort of that like, okay, if I just stay in one place, I literally just stay in one place. All the people that know me are going to have no choice but to like come back. Right. And, and, and come to me. And personally, I know this is going to sound really lame, but it feels good when sort of for the first time people are sort of coming to me and, and talking with me because they want to talk with me, you know. As you might uh, understand, I don't go outside that often. Uh, I'm a little bit agoraphobic. 
I, uh, I'm dealing with certain mental health issues, uh, that make it a little bit difficult for me to connect with people. And the biggest component of that is probably social anxiety. And it doesn't, um, it doesn't show itself in the same way in VR chat as it does IRL. Like I'm a much more quiet person in IRL. I have a much more difficult time actually talking with people. And it still happens within VR chat, especially if there's a lot of people talking, a lot of noise. Uh, that I just have to take a break and not play the game for like an hour or two and then I'll come back and then maybe fewer people are on and then I'll be talking to people again. But I think, I don't know, on my end, I think it's important for me to recognize that I'm an introvert. I'm always going to be an introvert, right? So I'm always going to not really enjoy huge crowds and I'm going to need much more alcohol if I ever go to like a house party or something. Just to feel comfortable. With it. Hey, buddy. Are you drinking a nice milkshake? Yeah. Nice, great job. My mom worries a lot for me. I think I can understand that. Yeah, it's because I'm I'm, I'm socially isolated, you know. And... Well, there was this one day where I hadn't like messaged her back. I think. When I started doing this, my life was in sort of a, a great upheaval, right? I had just broken up with my long-term girlfriend. I felt like I had like very little closure from that. I didn't really know what to do. All of a sudden I had to like start making friends again because like 80% probably of my, my social output went to that one person. And I guess that's sort of a learning mistake from that. You never should like over rely on your partner to to sort of have everything for you when it comes to a social life and stuff. You know, when you share a lot of friends and stuff, it's it's always difficult afterwards. Sort of, uh, but that's also difficult because like we we were like we separated. You know, it was like we had already lived together and. She had to mail me back all my stuff when we broke up, all the way from New Zealand to Norway, right? And it, you know, it was a big thing, right? And her family had to message me, being like, you know, oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. You know, it was like a big, big thing, you know. Uh, well, I'm a software developer, uh, and I am generally speaking, uh, my like my official title is like a. A software engineer, and I'm supposed to be full stack, but I mainly work on the back end. Um, and I work for a power company. And, uh, it can be a very stressful experience because if something goes wrong in production, you have to fix it no matter the hour, no matter the day, no matter how much time it takes. So I've experienced having to work between the hours of like 8 a.m. to 11 p.m., like three days in a row, because we, we had to get production running again. Because when something goes wrong with my company, we're like the only ones that can fix it. And, you know, every single minute, every single hour that production is not running, we are losing money. And so that can definitely be a very stressful experience. But over time, as I've like, you know, gotten to know more of the developers and we've gotten a more stable uh, more stable applications because we've actually fixed a lot of bugs and stuff uh, it's become a lot more calm it barely ever happens nowadays I'm really glad I've been able to as a software developer work from home 100% all the way until now because that has also been part of why I've been able to sort of uh, be as available as I am because oftentimes I'm working, I'm programming, and then at the same time I just have the sound on in the background. And then if someone approaches me, I can then just say hello. That doesn't happen all the time because, you know, you got to really focus when you're programming. Sometimes, like, you have a lot of different concepts in your mind, and if someone goes up to you, you can lose that sort of thread. So I always mute myself before I, you know, I do something that takes a lot of 
power. But yeah, my day is usually spent here, or it's on Discord, or it's playing a video game, or watching a movie or TV show. That's the things. YouTube too, of course. That's my free time whenever I'm working. If I if I wake up, like one of the first things that I do when I wake up is I, I turn on the monitors. And then I check out, is anyone around? And sometimes people are, right? And then also people get really surprised. In general, when I come back and people are here, they're like, whoa, you're back. Kind of. It's a tiny event in their lives. But with some people, something that I hear kind of often is, oh, I'm so happy that I finally got to talk with you, you know? Because sometimes people have been like coming up and visiting and Especially they're like Americans. I mean, yes. I mean, something that happens very often is that, um, I mean, sometimes if I'm like cooking food or something, right, I can hear people talking around me, doing things, patting my head, you know, having fun, you know, sort of just playing around, pretending like I'm there talking with me. And then when I come back after like five minutes or something of them playing around, I just get shocked. And like, oh my god, oh my god, he's here. Yeah. Then they have a very different sleeping schedule from mine, and they might be online at a time where I am nearly always asleep, right? So on the rare occasions when I'm actually awake at those hours, when I'm actually here, then they often get like very surprised. And very, Whoa! So the European crowd, the ones that are like closer to my time zone, they're probably a lot more used to having me around. I think, definitely. How are you doing as AZ? I don't know how to say your name. Hope you're doing alright. No. Yes. I'm glad you're doing okay. One big tip that I can give to people is that if, I, if I'm here and I'm like AFK, uh, that you can just add me on Discord and send me a message like, hey, I'm up here, and as long as I'm not either working or sleeping, or I'm like really busy with something, like I'm in the middle of like a multiplayer game session or something, then I'll I'll be on it away. I usually reply regardless, telling you why I'm, you know, not available to talk. So just you know, there's the reason why I have it on my profile. You're allowed to add me there, and probably see it relatively soon. And of course, I also meet a lot of people that like uh, have certain issues that they need to talk about. Like, a lot of people come to this world, it's called reflect on life, right? So that's what they do, they sort of come to reflect on like the bigger things, and sometimes they have something that they want to talk about. And that's both with my friends and also often strangers. And when I hang out with friends on here, let's get approached by other people as well, right? And I don't know, that's just how we sort of get to know each other. And I feel like there's definitely a sense of community on here because there are like regulars that come on every day or like nearly every day. And then there are other people who sort of go away for a bit and then they come back and then it was like, hey, long time no see, right? And I find that really enjoyable, you know, feeling like uh, I know people and just being able to talk with them every day, I think that's really nice. Literally, any kind of person on VR, which I can imagine, comes up here. Um, so, you know, it's guys and girls, sometimes it's even kids, um, sometimes it's people that are like in their 40s and stuff, which I always find interesting. People from all kinds of backgrounds. Some of them are trolls, and and a part of it is also that, like, you know, kids and stuff don't always know how to get up there, and so I'm kind of happy about that. And often I can hear, like, the like a squeaky voice going, like, How do you get up there? How do you get up there? And I always just, mm -hmm. I always just go, like, Hello? Hello? That's the only thing I say to them over and over. <laughs> and they keep asking me over and over. And then they get really annoyed with me because I don't say anything. But I just find that kind of funny. I'm sorry to say. I don't know how long I'm going to be doing it for, right? If it's going to be like, maybe for the rest of the year, or maybe something like that, but... I can imagine myself traveling, and while I'm traveling, try and figure out a solution to keep myself online as much as possible. Right? 
And that could be as simple as just, for example, getting a friend I really trust to just log me in and put me here and just let me stay. Check on me once a day that I'm still online. Or something similar to that, maybe getting a virtual machine and letting it run VR chat where I'm just idle while I'm gone. Just something. Um, but yeah, I'm probably going to be bringing my laptop with me wherever I go. And uh, hopefully I'll only be traveling in places where there's internet as well, because that means that I'll be able to still be active and talk with people and keep in touch. But yeah, I, I do I do miss traveling. Uh, I think it's a lot of fun. Um, but I've actually never traveled alone before. It's always either been with family, friends, or a partner. And so... Currently, it's a little bit difficult for me to see that, especially like the pandemic is in full swing. Hopefully within a year, it's not going to be here anymore. But even by then, who am I going to be traveling with is like a, a big yeah, question for me. But I feel like maybe a, a part of like the motivation of like making international friends is that like if I become good enough friends with someone, it could become like a, a motivation to actually come and visit them, right? And be like, hey, I only meet them. Like... I, I do have like a friend group where it's sort of like, you know, a little community and we've already sort of discussed the possibility of like having some sort of uh, where we would meet and how we would get there, etc, cetera, etc, cetera, where we just all sort of get together and see each other in life and I think that would be a lot of fun, actually being able to do something like that, having a VR chat meetup at some point. This is with my European friends though, so, I mean, it's a shorter... Uh, traveling I guess because VR chat has given me a lot and uh, I wouldn't really have known how important it was until I sort of spent as much time here as I have uh, that would definitely be a part of it but in my perfect life I don't think I would be spending time here 24 7 I can say that much too it would be maybe more like two three hours a day and at most. <laughs> there have been people yeah. um, uh, trying to get over to that tree all the way behind you, right? And you just watch them, like, fall yeah. into the water, and then just now as you were yeah. talking, somebody <laughs> fell from the tree, <laughs> and was just like, ah! Oh my god. <laughs> oh, that's so bad. It was funny. Oh well. <laughs> did, they, did they get there beforehand? Did they at least get there? Because it's uh, it's difficult getting up there. That's the big challenge, right? It is. It's precarious. You should say something in Norwegian. Okay. I have already said the first thing in Norsk. But I can say no more. I can't say what you want to hear. But this is at least some Norsk sentences. I'm just going to use them in video if you want. Was that good? Perfect. You're just gonna have to translate it for me later. <laughs> no, it's uh, it's a secret. It's a secret. What I just said. It wouldn't no, be as fun if I told you all the all the insults I just threw at you. You're gonna hold it all against me. I'm sure of it. Oh. I hope you said. This is how the drama inspiring. starts. <laughs> Actually, the real truth about my background is that. When I died, my soul was actually transported into VR chat, and so now I can't leave. And that's why I'm always there, and that's why I'm active so much. Because I literally, I can't sleep, I can't leave. I literally breathe this virtual space. Yeah. Go out and vote. It's important, little bot. It's important. And first of all, I'm just politically interested in general, so, so I try and like keep up. Not just in, in like, uh, North the United States, but like, you know, for example, Germany, I also try and keep up with. Um, France, like some of the bigger countries, basically. Um, and I don't know, I've just always, it's always just been enjoyable to me learning about it and reading up on it. And, and um, I don't know, I feel like, especially when it comes to the United States, the stakes are much higher. Not just because you're like uh, a superpower, right? Um, and you're like the leader of the free world and everything it's also just because like um you know the the ideological differences between the republicans and the democrats yeah, i think they're much bigger than what you would for example see in 
of course, it depends upon the Democrat and the Republican, right? You have, like, conservative Democrats, and you have liberal Republicans, sort of, kind of. Well, depends. I don't feel like there's that many Republicans that are very liberal, but you know what I mean. There are moderate Republicans that are much closer to moderate Democrats, but, like, overall, especially in today's age with Trump and everything, there is such a huge split between that side and that side. And to me, that makes it exciting. Th this is going to sound really sick, but like a part of me does miss a little bit the crazy Trump tweets because it was entertaining to read them. Because they, they were, it was always like some crazy whack job shit that he would say, like he, he would like yeah, threaten, threaten a war with Iran in like full caps and being like, "You motherfuckers, you stop killing protesters or whatever," right? or you know, just something crazy all the time. And part of me misses that. We're never going to get that with Joe Biden, thankfully. I mean, it's. I was still, I still was upset by a lot of the things that he did, and thought, "Damn, that fucking sucks." Um, it was especially a lot of the stuff he did in relation to climate, like getting out of the Paris Agreement, relaxing, uh, you know, like climate restrictions. I don't know. I don't remember what it's called. This is. I'm not a fan of Joe Biden because. Uh, I think that he made way too many promises and he's not kept up with them whatsoever. And so I think that fucking sucks. He seemed like a much more progressive candidate when he was actually up there and when he needed like the uh, youth vote to turn out and everything. He really tried to push those buttons and, uh, you know, was talking about minimum wage and all those good things. And he hasn't really done that. Yeah, I used to actually think that like maybe someday I'll want kids, but. Generally speaking, right now, I don't think that's anything I'll ever get. Especially ever since I got the the Marfan syndrome thing, because uh, it's like inheritable, right? So probably never gonna have kids. So if I ever do get a family, it's probably gonna get adoptions. You know, I don't think it's. I think the world's gonna become a worse place, and so I don't. I mean, why would I even want to bring a kid into this world when it's getting shittier? You know. Decade by decade, human wealth on an average level. Right? We're talking about like the median, not like the average. I think right now the median person is much wealthier than what they have ever been before. Right, and we also currently live in a time of unprecedented peace, which you wouldn't really think when you look at the media. But like, if you look at the world pre World War Two, and like way back then, the amount of wars that we had was just fucking crazy. Right. Not just in Europe, but like you know, on every continent, people were near constantly in a state of war with like one or the other entity. And ever since, well, the proliferation of like nuclear weapons and you know the whole globalist world economy, I'm not saying globalist is like a bad thing, by the way. I mean, it has very negative sides, but like I'm not one of those people that are like, oh, the secret globalist agenda is trying to take over the world that's not i mean globalism is just the idea of uh, it doesn't matter who cares but yeah the world is more peaceful but the big thing is just that we are already seeing that you know areas of the world are getting destabilized because of you know climate change related issues and um, i think that's probably only going to get worse year by year and resources are kind of sort of drying up and i think that's also going to be really shitty and the amount of plastics in the oceans are increasing etc cetera, etc cetera. and uh, the plankton in the ocean is dying and it's dying at a very rapid rate and it it's what produces like 40 percent of our oxygen in the atmosphere so we're going to see some really huge atmospheric changes that are going to be really really bad for everyone like you know, the amount of work that needs to be done to fix the the issues that we're facing uh, when it comes to climate change. It's so big, and a part of what we need to do, for example, is that we need to um, reduce consumption, which is going to have, like, a very direct... Uh, it's going to have a very direct, uh, what's it called, an effect on people's wallets, right? People are going to have to earn less, they're going to have to buy less, they're going to have to live 
in a very different way. And I think it's going to be difficult to make people vote for that. Uh, I don't know. I'm a little bit... I'm a little doom repelled. Uh, a little bit. But I think that's also just because we keep seeing in the news things are getting worse, right? We keep seeing, you know, wildfires in Australia and California. And, you know, the Amazon has started to collapse and we're seeing you know, methane being released more from like the permafrost in Siberia, blah, blah, blah. It's like so many different things and they're all intensifying. And it's like every single year, year by year, we see that like temperatures are actually increasing quicker than what we kind of thought they would. Like it's, it's still within the measures that we've had for like when it's going to happen, but it's in the upper bounds of it. And it looks like, you know, by 2100, we might be seeing like a five degree Celsius increase, right? Unless we mitigate things really badly, and if we do, it's still going to be like 3.5 to 4 degrees from. Unless we do it really, really well. Um, and that's really, it's going to, people, when people hear that, they think, you know, oh, 3.5 degrees warmer, pff, that's nothing, who cares? Uh, they don't really understand the actual implications of it. They, they don't get it. And I don't think they ever will, or maybe they will. And then they're just not going to care because it's you know it's still thirty or forty years ahead. I don't think the human mind is made to sort of tackle these kinds of challenges, where it's like intergenerational, right? It's like over decades and decades, and not within the next year, next five years. It's like slow. And for most people, it just doesn't make their the lizard part of their brain get scared because it's too far ahead. Eventually, uh, there were also like other people all of a sudden that w wanted to do the same thing. And so now all of a sudden you have like this, these uh, guardians of the tower sort of that they call themselves. And I call them that too. And I'm part of that. I'm obviously a guardian. <laughs> I'm the original. And yeah, we we've made like a little community. And we have a little Discord group. Uh, it's, uh, it's a pretty pretty cool place and we even have a little slogan which is like guardians assemble if we like go out somewhere that's not this tower like even if it's in this world in a different world maybe we always say that together like guardians assemble let's go and then we... I think that's fun I do actually go into other places, but I always make sure that I only do that when there is a lot of other people on here and I know that this is an active place. Because whenever I know it's an active place, I know that I can sort of leave for maybe like 30, 40 minutes and, and like I, I, I will be pretty uh, certain that it's not going to be depopulated within that time. Because when it's depopulated, it gets deleted and then everything has to restart. But Thankfully, the proxy comes on nearly every day, so even if that happens, he just starts rebuilding some new masterpiece, you know? Some sort of platform or little game or something with all these trees. And yeah, just chill there, right? And uh, get to know people. And a part of it is also because my, my one of my friends, he knows how to edit instances, and that's how I can have these uh, beautiful trees, like the one you're seeing over here. Believe you. If you ask the proxy, hmm. Are you the one adding trees? He always says, no, it's Maseth. He's over there. That's what he says every time, just to troll people. Yeah. <laughs> or maybe he's trying to get me uh, banned. Who the hell knows? <laughs>